Philadelphia University has had a history of collaboration. What we found in our strategic plan was that it was so dynamic and the greatest leverage of that collaboration was around design, engineering, and commerce where we really could put organizational and curricular structure around the word innovation. By having those disparate perspectives, those three disciplines embedded in the curriculum for the student, then we would be the first organization, the first organization of higher learning to really define the educational structure around achieving innovation. The world is just, uh, just so complex. No one individual can know everything. It's just common sense to solve today's problems by bringing together a lot of disciplines. We will have students that are uh, highly empowered and I think it will be immediately apparent to anybody that interviews them that they are players, that they understand different points of view, that they are not just focused on one thing like design or business or engineering, but they, they seek to find commonality and they, that they will be important team players. The first significant thing about this kind of learning is that it speaks to this generation. When we integrate uh, perspectives that we really come up with innovation and creativity. The students, you might think of it as wiki learning. They build on each other and they're used to doing that. They're used to taking information from a number of sources. You could call that a, a format agnostic. They just take in a tremendous amount of information. They sort, they synthesize, they collect, uh, they evaluate, and they make use of that information. When students learn best is when they learn how to ask questions. What we want to do with them is for have them to be able to ask any question they can think of, to not be afraid to ask questions, to learn not just to take notes and to listen to authority, to, but, but to look at a problem and then say, what is it that I know about this problem? What can I learn about this problem? To turn this problem upside down and come up with questions that lead to innovation. Because it's only going to be new questions and new answers that are going to lead us to creativity. The next step is for them to create a new curriculum for the design, engineering, and commerce school that replicates that for the students. The design charrette is a discipline neutral problem, so it doesn't favor any one of the particular disciplines, design, engineering, or commerce. It's a complex problem that's interlocking. This particular one was focused on news, content, creation, and consumption, as well as delivery. So a change in uh, technology or infrastructure would affect the business model, would affect the design and user interface. As the teams went after looking for new models of news consumption, creation, and delivery, they all were influencing each other. I think it's perfect timing to address the challenges of the uh, newspaper and the news industry right now. We've seen a decline in the revenue. Um, they lost $5 billion in the, la in the last two years. So they took a big hit. And I think business can look for opportunity there. And we can look for perhaps new business models. What is it that the newspaper might become technologically? Yeah, that, that's, that's, I think that's one of the questions we are talking about. Today. So maybe we don't want to throw the whole thing out. Maybe we want to modify. Maybe we should look at modification as well as a new media. We were just trying to understand what is it about this thing that is um, either problematic or wonderful, you know, on both sides. Where are the opportunities, where are the problems? Because if we can't identify the problems and the, and the opportunities, then anything we do is going to be superficial in terms of going forward. It's very exciting because it, what really begins to happen is that you see the students having to connect the dots for each other. They finally are applying a lot more of the theory that they've been learning, and they have, they're forced to articulate the way that they approach a problem to a student from a completely different major. At this table, we have uh, an engineer, uh, a person from a uh, business background, uh, a person from design, and they are talking about things that we all know, but the perspectives that is coming out from each one of them is, is really interesting to observe. Right. Well, that's something, we can that's something that, that, that that's is something not it's outside of our if, business. But if we if we can revolutionize the distribution method, we might be able to. It's a feverish circus, <laughs> and then you have aha moments. <laughs>
and those aha moments is just everybody culminating together and working together to try and define what our goals and what we're trying to get to. There was one really wonderful moment that showed where synergy was emerging. Uh, one of the professors was lamenting how the loss of uh, the newspaper business model is simultaneously a loss of, of a cultural element that has great value. And this was heard across the room by an engineer at the table I was sitting on, and that person then offered uh, technological solutions to replace the losses that high um, expressed. A good professional today needs to be able to do is to recognize when they can't answer a question themselves and that they have to go to other experts. So that process of collaboration, of teamwork, is what we want our students to be experts at. The world has changed. It's not changing. It has changed. The verticals in which we taught, those specific disciplines, became boundaries for students and certainly are boundaries for professionals. What the com combination does for our student is to tear those boundaries down, both in individual understanding and in corporate engagement. We were connected from our founding with industry, the textile industry. Uh, I think that's important from a number of levels. First of all, it was uniquely American. Philadelphia was the center of the textile industry for a very long time, and Philadelphia was part of the founding of the nation. So there's this historical linkage to what America is and to what American entrepreneurship is. And so if you invest in us, what you're investing is a robust history and a better chance at success uh, in the future.